This is my uh, Empire Total War, United Provinces, fought on hard. Um, you're about to discover why the battles are on hard. On the previous video, we looked at um, how we set up dragoons on the walls. I also had a quick look at the Spanish that were attacking us. Um, it's a good mix of uh, troops. It's a perfect mix for attacking a fortification. He's got the horse to charge in and take advantage of um, the uh, troops storming the walls when they open the gates by charging in with his cavalry. He's got plenty of artillery as well, not too much of it, but enough to batter down the, the walls as well, also for his cavalry to be able to charge through. Um, so it's a pretty formidable force there. You notice all those horses there in the corner, if you remember from last time, um, they're the dismounted um, dragoons. So they're just horses sitting there on their own, really. Um, the dragoons themselves are up on the wall. Um, that's the reverse wall. That's the, the, the wall furthest away from the enemy. So basically they're just manning a wall to keep the enemy away, hoping that, that they don't really have to get into action on foot. Um, I really want to use them for chasing down a routing enemy, if there's any chance of that happening. OK, so we're guarding the, um, the gateways. You'll notice recently we um, fought um, a fortress battle where we stood the men on top of the wall and um, put them on combat attack and the enemy just went straight through them and went down the steps towards the centre. On another occasion we um, charged them um, by, you know, on the sword. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when it comes up with a sword, when you're going to engage them in, in combat. So we managed to charge them, um, thinking that, that uh, we'd prevent them from going down the steps on the inside of the fort. And we ended up chasing them all the way down the outside of the wall on the ropes as well. So there doesn't seem to be a happy medium, other than to watch things very, very carefully, I'm afraid. You can see the walls are already being affected. I usually put my um, phylocarm um, citizenry on the, the corners, because that's the area that gets the biggest bashing, I'm afraid. But you can look out for where he placed these guns and move your troops around, so that's the case. Uh, you see there's no way we can man everything here. Our uh, Grenadier units are only um, 60 strong um, and so are the Phylarch Armed uh, Citizenry. The Phylarch Armed Citizenry I've put on the end of these bridges here to the outer forts on the wings of the fort. Now it's not right at the front of the fort where they're going to get the biggest battering or at the back where nothing's going to happen. So I'm hoping that the main effect of the Phylarch Armed Citizenry is going to be that they're going to fire at his troops coming in and reduce his numbers. Ah, he seems to have, see, there we go again, he seems to have found a gap, and he's got through again. Um, that's my fault, I've missed that one. I should have been blocking that one off. So run those grenadiers in to protect against that, and hopefully they'll block off any further troops getting in as well. I've got my uh, my horse down here on this occasion, instead of having a, a foot unit in the middle in square, which I often have, um, and it's foot that have got down the walls anyway at the moment, it's not cavalry they've got in. So what I'm going to do is run those down with all the horse that we've got. Um, he's, he's obviously not in square formation, and he's um, uh, straggled all the way back to the, um, the steps. So I'm hoping that means we've got an opportunity to defeat him in the middle of the fort there. Um. See, there you go, the wall's being battered down. He really has got a good combination of troops here. He's got guards as well, um, decent experience, regular infantry, um, and more of it than I've got. Um, I, I left it this way on purpose, if you remember, because I wanted grenadiers because they'll be storm troops in the future, because those are the kind of troops that I want. And also I wanted to reduce the numbers of troops that I had to, in order to encourage him to make this attack. Um, I, I wanted to avoid the siege, if you remember. I was talking about that on the previous video. Um, unfortunately, you do risk actually losing it as well, which isn't too clever. Look at all those troops over there. They'll, they'll all be his horse, waiting for those gates to open so they can charge through. Also, we haven't been here long enough as um, a complete army um, in, in a stable position um, to be able to have laid down Chevre de Free either. So, uh, we're on the one occasion when we could have really done with uh, something to repulse his cavalry. Oh, it looks like to me as though he's got a pile in over the walls. And there is not a lot we can do about that. The uh, dragoons that are on the back wall, I'm thinking I might need those now, so I'm um, asking those to remount.
here they come, right in the middle. They've got my uh, grenadiers chasing them in, of course. They're just running straight through and straight for the centre as quickly as they can, of course. Now, he's already got over there, so we'll have left a gap behind us because we're chasing him in, so I expect now that um, other troops will be pouring over the same, uh, the same piece of wall. Um, dashing in towards the centre there with everything you've got, as you can see. Now, once the centre goes, that is definitely the end of the battle. Uh, notice we've got the timer on on this occasion. You know the uh, big circle there on the left-hand side, on the the bottom left. Well, um, that's got a little clock next to it. We're quarter way through the battle. I've set the battles to 20 minutes. If you remember on the previous fortress battles, I forgot to do that, which meant that the battles went on forever, and I ended up having to go and mop up his um, his uh, artillery with what little infantry I got left. So on this occasion, I've restricted it to the 20 minutes, to make it a much sharper, much sharper direct battle. And we're about, like I say, about a quarter way through that. We're still fighting him in places on the wall. It's definite advantage. See that, that um, flag on the top right there? That's the amount of time um, he's occupied the centre. It counts down from two minutes. Um, if he occupies it for two minutes, then that's the end of the game and he's won. Uh, fortunately, I've been able to um, uh, defeat him in the centre there. Um, you see how he's routing. He can't occupy it with routing troops, I'm afraid. So the combination of the horse that I've thrown in, the grenadiers that are chasing, has been enough to um, to knock him off a little bit there in the centre. Still got some of these dragoons on the back wall here. For some reason, I seem to be unable to get them to remount. Not too sure why. Uh, more Spanish coming in here, as you can see. More piling in, with my dragoons chasing up in the back. This will be because I've um, asked them to attack them on the walls, and he's gone straight through the walls and gone straight into the centre. So I've gone um, chasing in after him. It's a uh, beggar's belief that they're able to climb over walls, run straight through my men that are on melee attack, and run straight for the centre of the fort. You know, it's, it all seems a bit odd, doesn't it, really? And it makes a bit of a nonsense of the walls sometimes. And, and on some occasions, I have done it before, you've noticed, I'll just form up in the centre there and wait for him to come over the walls and attack him as he streams through. I certainly do do that with um, uh, combat troops. I sometimes think it's to do with the uh, duration of the battle as well. If you shorten the duration of the battle and put it on 20 minutes, for instance, um, he will just charge straight through and go straight for the middle instead of um, fighting you on the walls first. I'm getting my men together now, in position. That's one of the advantages of having a fort, of course. It's fairly easy to get into the centre. Well, just as quickly as they can get into the centre, really, as the enemy can get into the centre. Of course, the other advantage is um, of having grenadiers is they fight better than regular troops. We've got the socket bayonet as well now, by the way. Not sure what the Spanish have got. They've certainly got bayonets. Oh, I'm not sure if they've got socket bayonets. I've tried on many occasions, and I don't know why it won't work, but I've tried on many occasions to get grenadiers to throw their grenades. It's one of the reasons why I like grenadiers. They're, they're an offensive... Um, offensive uh, as in terms of attacking um, group of soldiers um, so what they tend to do is fire throw the grenade and then charge in as you've seen me do in battles and that's one of the reasons why I wanted them for here um, not so much because I can use them in the fortress because like I say I always have problems I can't get them to throw grenades off the walls or even at troops who are in the clear in the center here as well um, so uh, I do struggle with that but um, it, it is an advantage for uh, when the fort is consolidated and there are no more Spanish in the area, and uh, we can start um, organising a campaign against another one of the neighbouring nations. Just checking those dragoons, see if they're mounted yet. You can tell if they're mounted because that middle sort of um, box there um, shows as like a bell with um, swords through it. Um, you can be fooled by that as well, by the way, because if um, they've shot all their ball, um, it will also show that way, so it will show as though they can't possibly um, they can't possibly shoot. You, basically that cross with the bell in the middle there tells you that it's not possible for them to shoot, and they can't shoot mounted. Until you get light dragoons, of course, you can. You, know, you need to take that into consideration as well. Anyway, the second half of the battle will be on the next video.